おはよう。はじめまして。私はアニです。どうぞよろしく。What's up, guys? Welcome back to my page. I know it's been like a little while since I posted, and I feel like this is becoming routine where I apologize to you guys and promise to do better, and then life just keeps getting in the way. That being said, I have a good amount of books here today to show you guys that I've been buying like crazy. The last week and a half. So don't judge me, guys. I did say that this is an illness that I just, I'm not ready to be cured of. So I literally have them all kind of like categorized in a way. So I have mangas. I even got some horror mangas this time, guys, which I'm super hyped to show y'all. I have some Nora Roberts. I have a Nam Joon book haul. If you don't know who Nam Joon is, he is our M, the leader of BTS. He's our literature king at this point. I also have some dark romance and fantasy. And I even have like one, I guess, horror thriller. Um, so yeah, that being said, let's just get straight into it because I feel like this intro can go forever. Also, guys, I'm sorry my tongue is blue. I have been snacking like crazy or more like a child on these fruit roll-ups. So yeah, please don't judge me. So I figure I start this video off with the manga portion. The first four books that I got is part of a series. I told you guys that I was going to get it, so this is no surprise. Um, This is Mayo. I feel it in my heart. This is going to be one of the top mangas that I read this year. Um, So I had to grab the remaining volumes that are out right now. So yeah, I got volumes three, volume four, volume five, and I think this is the most recent, which is volume six. But yeah, so basically this is the author of Inuyasha and she is writing a brand new story. But if I'm being real, it is basically a similar story. It has the time travel, the girl going back and meeting an exorcist where Kangome, she was meeting a half demon. But it's basically the same concept. And um, they ended up finding out they have something huge in common and now they have to work together and go on this journey to figure out how to undo the things that were done to them so i'm saying i don't want to give too much away but it's so good guys so i had to grab the rest of them and i i'm super stoked for the series so the next one that i ended up picking up is actually a recommendation from you guys um somebody left it in my comments i can't remember the name but i will put it right here thank you for the recommendation i just want to say that right now um it's funny though because i used to walk past this manga in barnes and noble and I would stop and look at it and be like, do I want to grab this? It looks kind of like something I would like. But I guess that I needed that like push to actually get it. And this comment is that push for me. Um, and this is Call of the Night Volumes 1. And this is what it looks like. Don't she look kind of badass? And even he looks kind of like weird. But I kind of love it to be completely honest. Like the style of how they drew these characters. So I just know that this girl is a vampire and this guy is a human. And basically to my understanding is he wants to become a vampire. But it's not as easy as you know um, other vampire stories where you just get bit or whatever. So he has to go through I guess like a bunch of trials and tribulations to become a vampire. And I also think that he might like her. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't really want to know too much about this series. So as this video goes on you will start to notice a pattern. All these books I don't really know much about if I didn't read them yet. Um, just because I wanted to kind of be surprised this month where I don't really know what's going on. I just want to read it and be like oh shit so this is what this is instead of reading about it and knowing off the rip what it's about i didn't read a lot of these like synopsis i just want to let you guys know that so the next one that i ended up grabbing is blackbird all i really know is that in this world there is a magic realm and our main character she wants nothing to do with this magic realm she just kind of wants to go to high school live a normal life and get a boyfriend so she's really important to these demons like killing her benefits them greatly so she gets attacked by one and her old time childhood friend or crush or best friend i'm not entirely sure um he ends up saving her and the way that he heals her is by licking her and that's all i know it just caught my attention and when i read that little part i was like okay like that's interesting and i like when our main characters are hunted why i don't entirely know i just like the thrill of it so i definitely want to get into this i'm gonna read volumes one if i like it i'll order more but yeah so that's that okay so the next one i'm not entirely sure if this is a movie or something just because of the way that they worded it on the like the manga itself 
Um, this is called Hello World, and it's like the manga. So I'm not sure if there's Hello World, the movie. If there is, please leave a comment and let me know. And where can I watch? Um, but yeah, so this one is definitely a cover buy. I was walking past it, and I looked at it, and I was like, I don't know why. It looks really nice, and I was intrigued about who this guy over here was that was paying attention to this couple. Um, but... Then I read a little bit of it and I was like, okay, so that must be his future self. So in this manga, basically, this boy's future self comes back and tells him, hey, the girl we're in love with, the girl we're dating, she's going to die and we need to save her. So they go on a journey of trying to save this girl's life. It's giving me mad, like, um, Tokyo Revengers vibes, to be completely honest, but I'm still intrigued. I still wanted to read it. And, I mean, look how cute this is. So I definitely wanted it. All right, so the next one, you guys... This is no surprise to y'all if y'all watched my last video. I think I posted an actual like mini trailer in that video of this manga. So I read this series. I love this series. I've raved about this series. But the actual physical copy is just not being released in stores. Released everywhere actually. Um, so when I was walking at Barnes & Noble and I seen it, I almost had a heart attack. Because I forgot that it was getting published. So y'all know I had to pick it up. And that is Blue Lock. And look how fucking nice this looks. Don't get me wrong. I don't really like his facial expression here. I think they should have did the eyes thing that's been going on in the manga and in the animation trailer. But it's straight. But yeah, uh, I've explained this manga I think a few times now on my page. But basically this is a sports manga, it's soccer, and instead of it being like, yay, yay, go team, this is kind of like, think about yourself. Be selfish, prideful, all that, and it's really cutthroat, it's like the Hunger Games of soccer, and I am here for it. So, um, I've been saying it on my page how much I've been wanting to get into horror manga, and yeah, so I'm so stoked to show you guys that I got a bit too, and this is about a girl who... She kind of like just pops up at these garbage cans and anybody that passes by, she kind of asks them if they want a little sister. Whatever their answer ends up being is what actually seals their fate. So if they say, yeah, I don't know if she kills them. If they say, no, I don't know if she kills them. I don't know. Um, so our main character is obviously going to encounter this chick and I'm really, really hyped to see how he's going to deal with it. Like how he's going to navigate his way until trying not to fucking die. I'm so excited for this. And also too, if you watched Coraline, don't she kind of remind you of the mom with the buttons? I don't know why. That's all I keep thinking about. But yeah. So with that being said, um, I got... I don't know if this is a horror manga though. So I'm going to just say that right now. But I'm still hyped to read it. So this is for the kid I saw in my dreams. And this is what it looks like. And it's hardcover. And it's so nice. So all I know about this story is the main character um, had a twin brother. And his twin brother would save him from their abusive father and you know he idolized his brother he looked up to his brother and one day his whole family is killed in front of him this is basically what i'm getting uh revenge he's looking for the people who killed his family so obviously not a horror now that i actually think about it but whatever it sounds so good to me if you guys know i'm big on revenge most of the books that i got here is revenge stories so it's a theme for me. I, I fuck with it. It's a vibe. Okay, so the next two is actually the ones that I'm super hyped for. Um, if you guys been watching, um, I've been trying to slowly get into Junji Ito, but I didn't know where to start. Now, I got a recommendation to start, I think, Dissolving Classroom. And I did start it, but then I was on Amazon and I seen that they had this sale. And I was like, holy shit, I really want to grab those. So, with that being said, I ended up grabbing Gaio by Junji Ito and Uzumaki by Junji Ito. So I ordered these off of Amazon. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, let's talk about what these books are even about. So Gaio is supposed to be about a fish. If anybody ever told me, hey Annie, you're gonna be reading about a killer fish, I'd have been like, yeah, okay, sure. Um, but for some reason, I keep hearing that this is a really good story, and Junji don't know how to write a horror story, even if it's about a fucking fish. So, do I have doubts? Yes, I'm not gonna lie. So the exact same way about Uzumaki. So basically, this is about a town in Japan that is cursed by spirals, and I guess it just drives people crazy to kill them, or I'm not entirely sure. So... I might actually be doing a reading vlog with these and give my honest opinion on them. But yes, I'm stoked. Look how fucking beautiful they are. I love the black mat that's on these covers and I also love these spines. 
But yeah, so I'm really, really hyped. So in one of my videos, I can't really remember which one, I was saying that I want to start reading poetry books. And um, I had ended up getting... What is the name of the other one? I forgot the name of it. So this is called Becoming a Wildflower by April Green. And this is what it looks like. So yeah, I grabbed that. Alright, so... I don't know if I told you guys yet, but I am planning a trip to Japan next year for my 28th birthday. Um, I'm super fucking excited. You guys have no idea how long I've wanted to go to Japan. I've already talked to my travel agent. We're looking at the bundles and yada yada blasi blasi. Um, so with that being said, I ended up grabbing this book called Japan. And it says, Inspire, Plan, Discover, and Experience. So I already have like my little stuff just waiting at this point i'm gonna go through it and plan my trip accordingly i'm so fucking hyped guys um and i'm actually i don't know if i told you guys i know that i showed y'all that i was reading japanese from zero and trying to teach myself but i actually recently just signed up for busu um and i am taking like the japanese lessons on that and it's really really helpful yeah i know like a little bit like the tiniest like tiniest to the point my fingers are still touching but I'm pretending like it's not tiniest um yeah I just know like readings and I don't want to embarrass myself but here I go ohayo hajimimashite watashi wa ani desu dozo yoroshiku I also know like jamata I know ohayo gozaimasu arigato gozaimasu uh just like really small shit but still learning whatever but I'm hoping by the time I go to Japan I at least know a little bit to the point where I know where the fuck to go and I know how to read signs kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so super fucking hype. Okay guys, so on to what I got for Nora Roberts, which isn't a lot. Um, I actually didn't pay for like three of them. So I was at BJ's with my boyfriend and his mother and I seen the books. Y'all know me, I can't walk by books and not stop. I was looking at them, he was watching me watch them and while I was walking around he was grabbing the books that he knew I was interested in. I ended up getting Nora Roberts Sweet Revenge. Um, I don't really, like I said, I don't know much. I just know that this chick is a princess and it's a revenge story on her father. The other one I got is Summer Shadows and this is a two in one. One is about two NOLA detectives and they are doing a murder case and they're falling in love while they're doing it but they actually start off hating each other so it's a hate to love romance. Um, and the second one is about a girl that was in Greece for vacation and one night she went swimming and when she gets out of the water there is a guy there standing with a knife and he's like hey don't tell anybody that you see me and then he disappears and then the next day she sees him at the house of her host and she's actually like ends up finding him attractive and I'm guessing that's a romance between them which blows my mind because if I'm being honest if I get out of water and some dude is standing there and he's like hey don't tell anybody that I'm here and he has a knife and then he disappears you don't have to worry about me B because I am already on the plane back to America like I would not be like just quiet stay there and then the next day i see you and also i'm like oh he fine like you was waiting for me at midnight with a knife you think i'm about to find you attractive you got me all the way fucked. <laughs> the next one that my boyfriend ended up getting me is actually her most recent release and it's called night work so i don't know nothing like nothing about this book i'm gonna be real i don't want to know i just kind of want to read it um I trust Nora Roberts at this point in my life to the point where I don't need to read what the books are about. I'm going to just get them and I'm pretty sure they're going to be really good. And then the next one I grab is actually called Dark Witch. And if you know Nora Roberts, you know she actually writes like supernaturals. She also writes like thrillers. Then she also writes like romances. I think she literally has her hands in every type of pot. Um, But yeah, so this is what it looks like. And it looks really pretty and it was a straight up Nora Roberts cover by and yeah I don't know what it's about I just figured it's about a witch and I enjoyed the hell out of her um apocalypse series it's the year one with it had like witches and demons so I definitely want to get into a new series of hers Let's go on to the next pile of books that I bought so I got four recommendations from Namju's reading list and I'm not even gonna lie I'm so excited to read these so i usually read 
romance, fantasy, been venturing off towards horror, but I don't really like non-fictions. I try to read like the self-help books. I don't know. I just, I, I don't really get into it, but lately I've been feeling kind of restless where I'm like, okay, like it's cool to read these romances and fantasies and don't get me wrong. I can get a message from anything. Just like I can learn anything from anybody that I meet. I just wanted something to kind of like really broaden my horizons and really try to start to see different mindsets, different point of views, like different ideologies. So when I see Nam June's reading list, I was like, why the fuck did I not think to do this a long time ago? Because he's my bias. But yeah, so with that being said, the first one that I ended up grabbing is Almond. And the boy in his books have alexithymia and that is like a condition where he can't feel his emotions it's like i don't really know much about it it says yoon jay was born with a brain condition called alexithymia that makes it hard for him to feel emotions like fear or anger he does not have friends but his devoted mother and grandmother provide him with a safe life but everything changes when a shocking act of random violence shatters his world leaving him alone and on his own yeah so i been reading this um all right so the next one that i got on his list is it didn't start with you how inherited family trauma shapes who we are and how to end the cycle. If you know me and we've had actual conversations in life, then you know this is a conversation that I have with numerous people. So when I seen this, I was like, holy shit, like, okay. And I didn't read the back. I just read the front and I was like, okay, like, I'm going to get that. Um, And then I read the back when I got it and I was just fucking flabbergasted. So it says depression, anxiety, chronic pain, phobias, and obsessive thoughts, right? And when I was reading this, I was like, damn, that's me. It says, the evidence is compelling. The roots of these issues may reside in the traumas of our parents, grandparents, and even great-grandparents. The latest research affirms that traumatic experience is passed on to future generations and that this emotional inheritance, hidden in everything from our gene expression to everyday language, plays a far greater role in our health than ever previously understood. So... Yeah, I am definitely going to read this. I'm definitely going to take notes on this, annotate it and everything because I know this is one that is really going to have me opening my eyes to certain things because this is things that I actually deal with in real life. The next one that I ended up grabbing is called Demian. So I don't really know what this one is about. So let me... You know what's funny about this? I'm talking about Namjoon. I go on my phone and it's Namjoon's turn to take over Pinterest. Hold on, let's see. Yeah, and like that's the first thing see is now june okay so in this story we follow a young boy named emil and it says emil's entire existence can be summarized as a struggle between two worlds the show world of illusion and the real world the world of spiritual truth in the course of the novel accompanied and prompted by his mysterious classmate max demian he detaches from and revolts against the superficial ideals of the world of appearances and eventually awakens into the realization of self yeah and also too it says this is a story of youth okay so the last book that i got out of namjoon's reading list and mind you guys there will be more i am definitely ordering more from this list um, I'm actually going to probably do a reading vlog of just reading straight Namjoon's reading list. Um, yeah, so stay tuned for that. Oh, also, ARMY, if you're watching this, J-Hope's uh, album, Jack in the Box, make sure to check that out, please. It is fire, literally. Anyways, the last book that I ended up grabbing is The Midnight Library. And I believe in one of the episodes, I think it was Suga and RM reading this. I really wanted to pick this up when it first came out, but I don't know. Like I said, sometimes I need that push and RM and Suga was that push for me. So yeah, um, definitely want to read this. Also, crazy coincidence is me and my friend was just having a conversation i think fourth of july about books and she was talking about this book so thank you stacy definitely appreciate it because you were also a push to read this from my understanding is about a girl who dies and she's kind of in limbo and she enters like this library and all the books and stuff is like moments and events in her life and I guess she starts to make different decisions to see how her life would have ended up, if I remember that correctly. Um, so yeah, I definitely am excited to read this. On to the romance side of things. I'm gonna start it off with my mafia romance. I got two, um, and I read both of them. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is part of these Tainted Heart series, and it is called The Mafia and His Angel Part 1. And this is by Lila James. This, guys, I read on Kindle I think years ago and it's still been on my mind ever since but yeah so in this story we follow Alicio and Ayla and Alicio is 
like the head of this mafia group and he's all about revenge right now so he is basically killing off his rival mafia gang or just rivals I don't know if you say mafia gang but whatever he's killing off this rival gang um because they're the ones who murdered his mom so he's killing like everybody that have anything to do with them to the point like if you sell food to them he killing you you their babysitter you got to go it don't matter if you're blood or not and um so that is his story where Ayla she is running from something she's had like a dark past she's like real skittish and she runs into him and they form a bond and a relationship starts to grow. But Ayla is hiding something that could potentially get her killed, basically. Really, really good story. Really good series. Loved everything about it. This was a five-star read for me. Um, so if you like your revenge stories, if you like your mafia romances, this is definitely one to pick up. The second book on my little mafia romance is The Enigma. This is part of the Unlawful Men series. And this is book two. I got it because it was on sale on Amazon. But yeah, so the first book is called The Brit and that follows another couple and he is part of the mafia. I think he's like the leader of the mafia. And then in part two we follow James and Bue's story but then when we get to the resurrection you do want to read this one if you're gonna go on to the third one. Just saying. Um, and this one though, we follow James and Bue. James is the enigma. He is basically a guy who's on a revenge path. He's killing off all these people who had something to do with the murder of his family. And um, Bew was once a cop and her mom was also a cop and her mom was working the Enigma's case. So something happens, her mom ends up dying and Bew is like going downhill at this point. James know everything about her because he knew about her mom being on his case kind of thing. And so he ends up running into her and they start to bond and forge a little romance. But James is hiding a lot of secrets and Bew is kind of catching on to a lot of things. Really good though. Um, God, I love this book. I love this series. I'm waiting for the next one. Definitely check out the series if you like Mafia romances. Because Jody Ellen Mop is damn sure know how to write one. Okay, so the next one that I ended up grabbing is actually another part two. Um, so this is Archangel's Kiss and the first one is Angel's Blood. Um, I read it I think like last month and definitely enjoyed it. So in this book we follow Elena and she is a vampire hunter and one day she is hired by the Archangel Raphael who is known as like cold-blooded killer at this point but he is kind of like also like the leader of this this state or whatever and um she is hired to hunt another Archangel and that has never been done and this Archangel is fucking like psychotic. It's a lot of guts, blood, torture so if you're not into that kind of shit do not read the series um but it was so good and while she's on this hunt she's also kind of falling in love with Raphael. um so yeah there was a twist at the end that i didn't see coming so i definitely had to pick up book two next one that i got after that is just a normal contemporary romance and that is heart and soul and so as in Korea so um which I love the play on words so yeah they always have like this red string that's kind of like your fate string I guess or your romance or soulmate or something like that um I I don't know why I love that concept but yeah this is about a girl who is adopted in America and she is Korean one day at her adoptive father's uh funeral there's a comment that's made that literally ends up triggering kind of like an identity crisis for her and she goes to Korea to try to basically get in touch with her family and find her Korean roots and she also has a love interest so I'm definitely going to read this. I love everything about that and I'm really really excited to start this. It's also a part two called Soulmates and um I didn't order it yet just because I want to make sure that I actually like this before I do. Okay so the next two is by Tilly Cole and the first one is It Ain't Me Babe. This is an MC slash cult kind of romance story. Loved it. I actually read both of these. Um this is one of those like I read it on Kindle for free and loved it and was like I need to buy it. So in this we follow River and Mia and Mia was 
raised in a cult and it's like it's fucking like traumatic bro so it, it has sexual assault and stuff so just telling you guys that now if that's something that's a trigger for you don't read this book but yeah and river is in the mc and he stutters so he doesn't talk i think he's called like the hangman mute and mia and river actually met for the first time when they were kids i think river's dad was burying a body somewhere like far in woods and river ended up coming across the base of the cult where Mia was staying. And she was crying at the fence. He was trying to talk to her, but mind you, he stuttered. So it took a little time for him to really get out what he was trying to say. Um, and then they part ways and never see each other again because he could never find a cult again. And years later, Mia actually escapes from the cult. She's on the run and she runs into none other than River. And so basically the cult is after her still because she ran away and he's like, holy shit, this is the, the blue-eyed angel and yada yada. So yeah, it was really good. Yeah, so this is actually a really long series, but each series follows a new couple. I'm going to order the rest of the series, but I definitely had to start off with It Ain't Me Babe. <sighs> so Tilly Cole is really good at making you sob. Like, if you ever read A Thousand Boy Kisses, you know what I mean. Um, And this book had me crying at 2 in the morning. And this is A Wish For Us. So yeah, this is so good, guys. So in this story, we follow Dean and Bonnie. And Dean has a condition where he sees everything in colors. He tastes everything in colors. And it's an actual condition, but I can't remember the name. So Dean is a, like, up-and-coming DJ. He used to be, like, a child musical genius, like, a prodigy. And he stopped playing music and became a DJ. And he was a DJ in, like, England or something. One day, Bonnie's in England, and she knows of him. And she's, like, really excited to see the new music that he plays. And so she goes to the club, and she hates it. Later on in the night, they meet each other, and she is not shy of telling him, like, that shit was whack, bro. And then they go their separate ways, and Bonnie goes back to America, and Dean goes back to doing whatever Dean does. Three months later, Dean is actually sent to America. America to attend this school and who goes to the school other than Bonnie and they start to actually like get to know each other and it's so bittersweet I wasn't expecting it to go the way it went now if I had to say right a thousand boy kisses at the top tier for me like that shit was like I'm still like going through it years later after reading that book so I would say a thousand boy kisses here and a wish for us is like right here like it's 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 near it it's not as sad but it is sad um great book though definitely will recommend it but i had to grab it now we're gonna talk about books that had me sobbing could not control my emotions then we need to talk about darling venom i literally just read this book this week and i had to order it I actually ordered it when i was like halfway through the book because i knew it was a masterpiece at this point so in this story we follow charlie and keelan and tate trigger warnings guys this is very very heavy on suicide and depression and just like anxiety and just if those are triggers for you do not read this book please in this story we follow charlie who had a traumatic thing happen in her life and one day she decides that she is going to end it all and so she makes her way on valentine's day which is also her birthday to her school's roof to kind of you know when she gets up there keelan is already there with the same plan and she kind of like stops him from doing it and they end up making a pact that every year on valentine's day they're going to meet up on his roof and they're going to talk and they're going to like basically make sure that each other is okay and they end up doing this they end up meeting up and catching up and as the time goes by they end up liking each other but keelan is not getting better he's getting worse and um one day while they're supposed to be meeting up charlie's late to the meeting and keelan decides that that's the day that he's going to do what he was planning to do keelan hated tate who was his brother and guardian at the time and so he would tell her like you know tate's an ass whatever blasey blah, blah, blah. years later charlie and tate ends up like officially meeting and the way that they end up meeting is like I was not expecting at all. She kind of hints that she knew him and Tate jumps on it because he's just like, damn, like I failed my baby brother. He's feeling guilt like no other. They end up forging kind of like a bond. Sad guys, but it's also a happy ending. Definitely, definitely will be a reread. The other one I ended up grabbing is We Own Tonight. I actually read it the same night that I got it. So this is about a girl who actually gets to spend one night with her celebrity crush. And then she kind of like bounces. And he is very persistent in trying to chase her down. I got that. It seems that I got a lot of books that I actually already read. The next one I have not actually. So this is Binding 13 by Chloe Walsh. And I've never heard of this author, so I'm 
going in is super blind. All I know is this is about a rugby star who got injured and nobody know that he got injured and he's trying to show the like the scouts and stuff that he is the best and he can do this and this is kind of like the year to not be distracted. So he keeps getting distracted by the lonely girl with sad eyes. Yeah, so that's all I know about it. I don't know why she's sad. I don't know. I didn't want to keep reading. I want to read it and be like, oh shit. I don't want to already know. So then I grabbed An Arrow to the Moon by Emily X. R. Pan. Um, also don't know that much about this. I just know that the cover is really pretty. Um, these two kids who end up liking each other, but something's going on supernatural wise in the town. And they have to figure out basically what's going on. The only part that I seen is the unearthly fireflies part. And I was just for some reason. This reminds me of Teen Wolf. You guys remember Teen Wolf season 6 I think. When Styles was like that fucking guy. Don't get me wrong he was that guy the whole entire show. But one season when um, he was the villain of the season. But um, yeah I don't know why when I read that part. Definitely made me think of Teen Wolf. The next one that I ended up getting is Blood Sky On and this was a straight up cover by. Like that is phenomenal. So from my understanding from the back because that's the only part that I read is this is a revenge story. I'm real big on revenge stories. Um, So it says this is what they deserve. They wanted me to be a monster. I would be the worst monster they ever created. That's badass to me. Sounds like a badass female character and y'all know I love those. So bam had to get it. <laughs> Sorry guys, I'm having a gushers break. Okay, these are the last three that I got and I literally know nothing, nothing about them. I just know what I read in the back of this one. This is Jade Fire Gold. So it says, her destiny and his revenge. And we know I love revenge stories. So it says, this is the girl I have to put my faith in. This is the girl who will help me get my throne back. This is the girl who will either be my salvation or the damnation of the entire world. I love stories that one character has the power to literally set the whole entire world on fire. Like, that's just my shit. I'm literally, in my novel, I have a character that can literally set shit off. But yeah, so I'm super hyped for that, even though I don't know the full gist of what's going on. And then the next one is The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. So I don't really know much about this at all, actually. I don't want to know about it, so I'm just going to tell you guys I bought it. <laughs> the last one that I ended up getting is Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May. And yeah, this was a straight up cover by, because can you guys see this? It was so freaking cute. And I was like, yeah, I kind of want it. But yeah, I just know what it says here. And it says, this debut weaves a dazzling tale of dark magic, romance, and murder. And y'all know I'm here for dark magic, romance, and murder. But yeah, oh, I forgot about this. My actual last two books. Sorry, guys. I don't, I didn't see this little pile. Okay, so the other one that I ended up getting is Fool's Assassin by Robin Hobb. This is what it looks like. I've been hearing so much about this series and I was just like, dude, I have to grab it at this point. And then the last book that I ended up grabbing is called We Could Never Leave This Place by Eric LaRocca. And this is what it looks like. Look how fucking pretty that is. Like, I would love this painting of this person on my wall. So yeah, um, a young girl with an unusual imagination is sent on an odyssey into the depths of depravity. After her father dies violently, young Myra is surprised to find her mother welcoming a new guest into their home, claiming that he would protect them from the world of devastation and destruction outside their door. Yeah, okay, so basically all I know about this is that it's supposed to be a horror. Um, it's literally so fucking small guys really wanted to read it just because like i heard that this is a really good twisty ass author so yeah that was the last book that i ended up getting but yeah thank you guys for watching i'm sorry that it'd be taking me forever for these videos um i'm gonna definitely try to do better but anyways thank you guys for watching please if you like the video make sure to like and subscribe make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when i do post also if you have any thoughts recommendations anything on the books that I was talking about or not even talking about please make sure to leave it in the comments if you are army let me know how you felt about Hobie's album because I'm loving it I'm really hyped to see what he's gonna do at Lollapalooza so yeah thanks guys until next time